In July of 2023, not that many months ago, me and my husband tied the knot, we are married. It was honestly the best day of my life ever. And I'm, I'm sorry, I've become one of those people who say my wedding day was the best day of my life. I now, I now understand it, I now get it. It was the best day of my life. And I wanted to make these videos because basically I just wanna reminisce a little bit and also let everybody in on what has been the most fantastic, incredible, amazing year of my life. It's just been the most wholesome year of celebration. So in this video, I'm gonna cover the things that started to happen around about 12 months before the big day. I'll start with what we knew we wanted. So we knew we wanted a Greek wedding and that means big numbers. Our initial list was over 300 people. So we were like, okay, we can either go down this route where we only look at venues that cater to sort of Asian and Greek weddings because they, some Asian weddings have like 800, 1000 people. So you can look at those big, big venues or we can address our list, try and get it down a bit and have more options open to us. So we kind of, we did a bit of both. We started out by looking at big venues. So one of the first places we visited was somewhere called the Heart of England, which is like a big venue nearby. It's got acres of land. One of the ladies took us on her little golf buggy and gave us a tour all around the land. We then spoke to them about putting up a marquee on their land. And then they showed us like their purpose built wedding area, which looked okay. I wasn't a huge fan of it. Even trying to imagine the dressing and staging in there just wasn't really feeling it for what we wanted. After the viewing, we were both on the same page. We were like, we're not gonna go ahead with that place. So it makes it easy when you're both in agreement about stuff like that. So then we move on. So this place was probably the first strong contender at the time I'm recording this video and sending it to Atch because I'm with my mum and he couldn't make it to the viewing. We've just pulled in Atch and we think we're in the right place. This is the driveway. And that is the house in front of us. So it was a little bit confusing when we arrived because we walked, we pulled into the wrong entrance. So we are at Swinfen Hall right now. It feels crazy looking back at this footage because it's reminding me of how much I really did like this place. First impressions were I really loved what I was seeing. This was the entrance so this is where guests would walk into and mingle there's a grand piano oh my gosh it plays itself <laughs> oh my god and then this is the meeting room where we met with the wedding coordinator and me and mum are just admiring the view and saying how amazing it was i was honestly feeling like when I was recording these videos to send them to Atch, I was thinking, right, we're gonna go ahead with this. I was so sure of it. So we're going outside. Bear in mind, this viewing also involves a lot of the looking at the accommodation. So there's accommodation on site for quite a lot of guests. I think it had like 20 bedrooms, something like that. So as you can see, it was raining this day, but you can imagine that on a beautiful sunny day in July, it could be really, really nice. That's a deer park at the back there. So we've got our own herd of deer that live there. There's about a hundred of them. That's Lucy, the wedding coordinator at the venue, telling us about the deer that they get on site, which I thought was so cute. We got on with Lucy really well. She was so nice and she showed us around the venue twice actually, once with my mum and then once with Atch so that he could see it for himself as well because we really, really were considering this place. So now we walk around into the marquee. Wow, oh wow, it's massive. So as you can see, the marquee is pretty big inside and this would be where we'd have the dinner, uh, the stage, the band, the, the toilets would be hidden in that little space there, tucked away. But my main thoughts on this marquee was that it's very yellow and there's not a lot of light coming in because the clear panels are only to one side. I asked the venue if it could be clear panels all the way around just to sort of take away a bit of the yellowness and to have more natural light coming in. It was quite a dark space. I was also asking her about basically hiring lighting because I thought the space was really yellow and I thought all my pictures are going to look basically very yellow. I don't really know how else to explain it other than 
the space itself. They can't change all of the drapes and all of these curtains, but it was just a bit too orangey for me. With the cost of hiring this place and doing it, you just kind of want it to be perfect. This is a little nook area where sometimes people have chill out, sofas. And I loved the amount of light coming into that space. But the main marquee was just so dark that I wasn't feeling it. But the house itself, the accommodation, all of that was so nice. And I was really rooting for this place if we could transform the state of the marquee. But I just didn't know if that would be possible, how much it would cost to hire lighting. Would I always be like, gosh, this is so yellow, even if I got paid for loads of lighting to come in? Am I being extreme? I mean, not able to see the potential of that that space itself. I th- I thought it looked beautiful. I thought it was really beautiful. Walking in there got on really well with the wedding coordinator in there. There was no plans for the carpet to change or for the drapes to change because I did ask if that was a thing that was possible. It wasn't. The inside of the marquee just just wasn't correlating with what me and Atch had designed on our like Pinterest <laughs> mood board. The ideas that I had, I felt like they wouldn't come to life because the inside of the marquee was just really yellow. Although you guys already know that I didn't go ahead with this place, I will give you a quick walk around of the accommodation. So downstairs they had a bachelor pad where the groom stays the night before the wedding and that room was very very nice modern decor pool table a bar it looked really really cool in contrast upstairs it was very much your kind of manor house stately home decor um clean and tidy but a little bit tired for my liking in terms of the accommodation for bride and groom on the night of the wedding and guests it wasn't to my taste but it was is obviously very fitting with the venue being a privately owned um, stately home. I was also told that there would be renovations happening so it wouldn't be as dated as it looks here. This is getting done. They're refurbishing this. The thing that really scared me about this venue was the tight turnaround for setup. So the previous wedding would end at say midnight and then from 1am you could start setting up for your wedding which is then that evening and it was just this really quick tight turnaround which scared me like previous wedding leaving, us setting up, having the wedding, it just sounded like chaos. In the end it was a no. On to the next plan. Now we looked at hiring the land that is directly opposite the church that we're getting married in. So we were getting married at the Greek church where me and Achillea met. Both our grandfathers helped build that church. My granddad, his granddad, they both put a lot into this community. All our grandparents actually. Both our parents got married there as well. It was just like, we're getting married there. There's this big patch of land. Well, there's a car park and then there's land across from where the church is. And we wanted to go and see about potentially putting up a marquee on that land. But the problem was is that it would be like putting on your own festival. The land itself needed attention because it, it was it was overgrown. The land was overgrown. So the costs involved with preparing the land, ensuring that it'd be flat enough for a marquee and then putting it up. I just felt like we were going to be running into loads of issues. So we didn't go down that route either. Although it would have been maybe quite convenient for people to just walk out of the church, cross over the road and be at the party. But we found Philongley Hall. It all worked out. Only a... 15 to 20 minute drive away from the church was where we eventually found our perfect wedding venue. Yay! (laughs) So this venue, I think my mum found it on Instagram and then she sent me a message being like, have you heard of this place? And I was like, I've never heard of it. I've heard of that village because it's up the road. We'd all heard of that village, but I hadn't heard of that place. Turns out it was a family owned property and they had recently started doing weddings so hiring out their like house and their land and we went to view it and i'll just show you how it went the hire of this place was a five day hire so i had enough time to get in set up put up my own marquee it didn't have to be subject to a marquee that was already existing on their land we could go out and source our own so we could get one with loads of natural light which is exactly what we did we hired a three pole sailcloth marquee tent which i'll talk about in uh, future videos if you're interested in the whole marquee thing 
this venue had I don't know like 80 acres of land it was so big I didn't go around it I I think I must have walked about 500 meters around it but we loved it and um, they had this flat patch of land that used to be a tennis court you might be able to see it there just beyond that big tree and that was where the marquee would live and they'd done this setup a few times before with other couples they'd shown me photos and videos of what it looks like and also they said I could come back later in the year as well and see what it would look like with a marquee on it to get a real idea and a feel for what my wedding day will be like space wise so I just to be honest I just totally put my faith in Lindsay the wedding coordinator it felt like she'd done this before she was experienced with marquee weddings I was talking about the type of marquee that I wanted she was familiar with it she was familiar with hiring generators you know outside toilets that kind of thing and I know I said earlier about how stressful it would be to sort of put on your own little festival but this is kind of what it felt like it was like putting on our own little festival but we had the support of Phil Longley Hall and we had the expertise of Lindsay, the in-house wedding coordinator. Now let's have a look around the honeymoon suite, which is where I would get ready and stay the night before and the night of the wedding. I love that I got to sleep here and wake up here and get ready here. I just loved it. It really stood out compared to the other properties I had seen in terms of decor, style, space, natural light, and I just, I was here for it. I was loving it. Like, look at this room, the original beams above. I just thought, yeah, this is a vibe. I loved it. I had already spotted my own little fridge in there. I knew where I'd be keeping my Prosecco, watching films on my own the night before. <laughs> I was already imagining my dress hanging up on one of those beams. When it all came to life, it was a really surreal moment, actually. Um, it was really surreal. Also the other accommodation for guests, there was like glamping pods, there was little cottages with hot tubs. My friends ended up staying in this one here, which was like at the bottom of the driveway, had a little dining room there, not that any of them used it. And they just made like a weekend of it. It was so perfect. So it was Christy, Shu, Emma, and Shu's boyfriend who stayed in this one. Yeah, it was awesome. Absolutely loved it. All the other rooms we kept for family, which was really nice because the next morning when we did the takedown, we were able to have a little wedding debrief before the work started. I could really imagine it there. I was, it was a bit of a stretch because we were like, can we do this? And also their capacity, the maximum capacity was 200. So we were like, we absolutely need to get our guest list down then. I don't know how many viewings I did. I had one viewing with my mum, just me and mum, then one viewing me and Achille. Then I locked it in, I think. I remember going through the dates with them that they had available in their diary and there was a few key dates that they had in July. I remember texting like some key players, like his best man, um, his brother as well, were not available because they were at another wedding that were more organised than us on the 1st of July. So I was like, okay let's ditch the 1st of July, let's not do that. We moved it to the 8th of July, which was available and it's even better because I just thought the number eight was like eternity. And I was like, oh, this is great. Like I'm getting good vibes for the 8th of July. I'm really liking it. So we locked it in and then I went on Canva and I created this save the date. We'll talk more about stationery in another episode, I think, because it really wasn't something we put a lot of budget towards at all. I've made most of it myself. I also had help from a family friend with a lot of actual wedding stationery that you see on the day. And I believe I only got the save the dates out six and a half months before the wedding. So was it January, Feb, Feb, March, April, May, June, July? Yeah, I think I got them out in February or end of January. And we had this whole discussion about it because Mum said it was cutting it fine. Yeah, yeah, my grandma said, don't worry. Back in the day, we used to get an invite for a wedding like four months before or weeks before. After that, we started setting up the wedding website and things like that. I think my wedding website is still live, so you'd probably go and look at it, to be honest, um, if I haven't got it on private. But I'm, I'm happy for people to go and have a little nosy around on it now. Yeah, we'll talk more about stationery another time. So yeah, that was finding venues. 
And I just want to say I did hours and hours of desktop research before I'd even step foot inside a wedding venue because so many of these like beautiful barn weddings that you see where it's maximum like 80 or 90 guests and it's like um, conveyor belt wedding. Like you go in, you choose from a menu, you choose what um, alcohol you're going to like. It's like tick box and then you just get there and it's done for you. Like, I don't know if I've explained that very well, but I found wedding venues where you can add everything you want, almost like you're ordering food, ordering online, add it to the cart and then pay. And it was like, the total was like 60,000 pounds. And it was like, pay now. And it was crazy because we decided to go down the route of dry hire, which is where you hire the land then you hire the marquee then you hire in the catering then you so you custom build your wedding in the way oh my god battery exhausted oh. right my battery died probably because i was talking for too long about dry hire as i was saying we decided to do dry hire which is where everything is separate so the venue is separate to the caterer is separate to the entertainment is separate to the florist is separate to everyone is the supplier that I, we chose, mostly me, that was, that gave us so much freedom because if we had gone down the sort of traditional Greek route of getting a hotel where you, um, you choose the hotel and then you're kind of subjected to their catering, their chefs, what they can make, what they can provide, then you're limited in what you can have on your wedding day. So many Greek weddings we've been to over the years go down the hotel route because that's just the easiest and most convenient and the simplest way to execute a big Greek wedding. Plus everyone can then book a room upstairs and they usually give you a discount code. So from like a convenience point of view, the hotel would have been probably easier, but it's just definitely not what I wanted. I must also say that before all of this, I considered doing only a destination wedding. And I met with a wedding planner who's in Greece and we spoke about the idea of doing just a destination wedding. You guys know now, if you follow me, that I ended up having a UK wedding and then a separate wedding party in Greece for all my family that couldn't make it. But I did consider just doing everything there. I'd have had to hand everything over to somebody else who lives there. It would have been really expensive for all of our guests to fly over. We also had people with kids who were in school, so we'd had to time it around school holidays. I'm there at night Googling like school holidays, Warwickshire, school holidays, Leicestershire. And like there's all these things to consider, constantly thinking about if people are going to be able to make it. Plus then, you know, that it was mostly the expense and how expensive it would have been for people to, to be there and they wouldn't have been able to. I would not do a destination wedding if you absolutely know that people can't afford it. Unless everyone you know is absolutely minted, don't do a destination wedding. Because you want people there, right? Like you want people who you love in the room. I know people say like, if they really love you, they'll go. But also people have got finances, they've got a life, they've got kids, they've got mortgages, they've got stuff going on. I just didn't feel comfortable with potentially asking people to spend that much money to come to our wedding. So that's why we didn't go down that route. And then I think in terms of wedding venues, I think that's pretty much it. I wasted a lot of time on a website called Hitched. I wasted hours, hours, hours scrolling, 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 clicking on a venue, finding out the specifications of the venue. I just wouldn't do that. I mean, it's great to get an idea, but none of them came to fruition. And the wedding venue that I found on the doorstep was not on that platform because they even said that that platform, that, that website just it's just like everyone's on it. And they wanted to do more like bespoke weddings, less conveyor belts, less like one wedding in, one wedding out, one wedding in, and more just like giving you and your wedding the attention and the care it needs by not having like back-to-back -back weddings all year. So yeah, I'll stop this video here. And in the next episode, I think I'll talk about finding my dress because that was a whole whirlwind as well. I actually found it really quickly. And then suddenly I decided I, I hated it. And I, I had to like, I'll, we'll talk about it in the next episode, but stay tuned. If you haven't already, um, please go watch my engagement video. I know a lot of people haven't seen it. I still get messages today being like, 
OMG, I've just seen your engagement video and it's because it didn't ever get posted to this channel. I've linked it up in my wedding playlist. I'll link it up in the cards. It's on mine and my husband's channel, which um, is now only a channel where we talk about property, um, investing and like renovations and stuff. So we're not sharing wedding-y things over there anymore. We're just doing property on that channel and finance. And this is where we'll be sharing wedding content and personal life things. I hope that all makes sense. I'll see you guys in the next video. If you're not already subscribed, please do. Love you loads. See you soon. Bye.